Matt, you were very quiet during the baseball shutdown, which is kind of unlike you. What have you been up to? Um, why were you so off the grid, et cetera? I was off the grid a little bit. Uh, I would, was in Arizona um, when everything shut down. I kind of just hung tight out there for a little bit. Um, I guess we were all kind of assuming baseball was going to come back uh, a little bit faster than it did. So just stayed out there, uh, took a little time off, but then just kept training. Luckily, there was uh, some places that were able to stay open and uh, just trained and, you know, stayed ready until, you know, the, the news came baseball was back. And, you know, I was lucky that I was able to, you know, stay out there and stay ready because a lot of other places were shut down. And I know it was hard for guys to, you know, get their work in. Were you able to do full workouts? Could you do defensive work too? No, I didn't get to take any ground balls, but I did get a cage and I made a little home gym. So I did what I could. Did you work on anything in, in particular, especially when it came to, you know, hitting or anything? Yes. Uh, just, you know, the things that I had trying to, you know, I was trying to accomplish in spring training, kind of tried to just pick up from there and just trying to, you know, find the simplest way to get into a good position to hit and be the most effective. For me, it's just trying to, you know, simplify things. What was your level of frustration over the over the delay of getting the position players on the field? It sounded like it was pretty intense. Um, definitely frustrated. You know, um, I know this is uncharted territory for everybody, including MLB, front offices, players. So, you know, get, you like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but it is frustrating, um, you know, especially from a player standpoint. You know, we feel like, this year, we have a really good ball club and we have a chance to make a run, um, especially with the short season, anything can happen. So we know how valuable every single day is, especially when it comes to spring training. So I think uh, we're frustrated that we weren't able to start on the first. You know, you look at around the league and a lot of teams are starting their spring training on the first and guys had been flying into cities, you know, days prior to the first to get tested and make sure they're on top of it. So I think we were just disappointed that, uh, you know, uh, our organization just, you know, took those extra few days and it ended up costing us even more of a few days when we were all, you know, ready to go on July 1st. But, you know, we're, we're on the field now and that's all that matters. And, you know, that's all we can control. So, you know, we want to, we want to just, you know, move forward. Do you, see any, long, do you see any long-term uh, impact from, from having started late? Um, you know, it's hard to say. Um, you know, would we have liked to start exactly on the first? Yes. Um, you know, I wish that our organization wanted to, you know, give us every day possible and, in, you know, not start us late. But that's, you know, out of our control. And I don't think that, you know, we're going to dwell on that and let it affect us. We don't have a choice. We need to just continue to move forward and get ready for the season. We can't, you know, let, you know, five or six days, you know, set us back even more. We just got to take advantage of the time we have. And I think our team's really good about, um, you know, not, not focusing on the negatives, focusing on the positives and just trying to make the most of our situation we're in. We know it's going to be a weird year no matter what. So, you know, a lot of things got thrown at us in 2020. We just got to keep rolling with it. Matt, how much of a leadership position are you kind of taking with some of this stuff? You guys have to really police yourselves when it comes to the protocol and staying safe and making sure everybody else stays safe. Plus, it's just such a strange year in general everything's completely different how are you approaching that as a team leader it is um you know after talking to marcus and some of the guys um you know we do have a few high risk guys on our team as well so i think the biggest thing we've been trying to stress is uh especially over these first few weeks when everybody's still kind of getting acclimated and getting used to this routine and all the different changes and guys are starting to come together more and more i think uh, we have the, the stuff at the ballpark down, you know, wearing masks in the clubhouse, wearing masks at all times, unless, you know, you have the distance or you're outside. So just trying to take those extra precautions, wash your hands, be smart, clean up after yourself in the weight room, wherever it is. Uh, the biggest things we've been stressing is uh, once you leave the field, I think that's the, the toughest part is, in, um, you know, a lot of guys have families, a lot of guys have kids. So they want to, you know, not only be able to spend time with them, but keep them safe. So for us, it's, um, you know, limit the amount of time you're outside doing, you know, things unless you're distance. I mean, obviously you can't just go barricade yourself at home, but 
you know, no, we don't need to go out to, you know, nobody needs to go out to bars or go to go. If you're going to go to the grocery store, you know, be smart about it, you know, make sure you're wearing a mask, you know, obviously those things have to happen, but limiting the amount of time you're, you're in contact with people that you haven't, you know, you're unsure where they've been, or we're trying to create our own little bubble. So we're trying to make sure that we have some strict off the field rules so that guys can feel safe at the field and, you know, last thing we want to do is be one of the teams that cause a problem and, you know, put this thing in risk. So what are you doing uh, during your downtime? How are you handling your downtime? Um, for me, uh, pretty much just going to the field and coming home. Um, been, you know, getting, obviously trying to limit the amount of times you're going to the grocery store and things like that, but uh, just, just making the most of the time at home and uh, just me and my girlfriend Taylor here. So we're kind of, lodged up here it's pretty much baseball and come home and relax and eat some food and if you can uh, take care of some of the things that maybe you would do at the field at home since we don't have as much time whether that's stretching or getting yourself ready so that you can you know be ready to go when you get to the field and maybe not just spend as much time there so there is some definite adjustments but um, you know it's a small sacrifice for if we can get through this season for everybody to just go to the field and then come home and kind of lock it down and it's it's going to be a weird time, but I think uh, we won't regret it if we can, you know, stay on top of it. Matt, Matt, what is your level of uh, comfort or optimism that this is all going to go smoothly and there's actually going to be a season? You're hearing a lot of people express, you know, some doubt. Um, players are kind of leaving their options open about whether to opt out or not as they see how it progresses. I mean, what what is your comfort level and, and your optimism level? My comfort level is, uh, I think the more and more uh, I've been going to the field, I've been getting more and more comfortable. I think the, that we're doing a pretty good job as a team and as a, you know, our, our clubhouse staff and training staff, everything seems very sanitary. Um, now that the Raiders are gone, we have a lot more space to use. So we have spread things out and it feels like we have a lot more room and things aren't as tight. So if we had our old locker room, maybe, Maybe that would be a little more of a concern, but now that we have the more space, uh, I've been getting more and more comfortable. Doesn't mean that we've let our guard down, but it's, it's, you know, I was a little nervous coming in, but the more time I spent there and seeing how things are running, I think that, you know, I am optimistic that we can really do this thing. Um, obviously I can't speak for other teams. I haven't seen what their setup is like, but if everybody does their part, um, I am optimistic that this season can happen, and especially if, we get through these this spring training and everybody's diligent and we can, you know, the guys that may have tested positive or not can get healthy and get past it. And then everybody remains healthy. I think that if we have our own little bubble and guys are, you know, have a routine that they know is safe. I think that uh, we can get through the season and hopefully uh, just continue to move on as normal throughout the next seasons. Now, what do you think is going to be the biggest uh, adjustment for you just in terms of what you're able to do when you're at the field, like whether it's a pregame routine or something you've already realized you're going to have to adjust? What's, what's the biggest change for you? The biggest change is probably not having as much time at the field. Usually I was somebody that would show up pretty early, like to, you know, not feel rushed. And with more, you know, rules being in place about how much time you can spend at the field and you know, staggering groups and everything, which is definitely smart and definitely, you know, has to happen. Um, so the biggest thing is kind of adjusting your routine and finding out, you know, what is the most important thing you need to do for that day to get ready. And sometimes, you know, you throw a bunch of things out there and see what sticks, but now you have to be a little more diligent because you don't have as much time. So I think it's understand what you need to get ready, what you can do at home to get ready. So when you show up, you don't have as much to do. I think for me, it's what can I get done at home so that at, when I'm at the field, I can just take care of those the necessities. Matt, what's been the weirdest thing so far for you being out at the Coliseum? Uh, the weirdest thing is probably how little people are at the field, I guess. Um, and also not being able to interact with your teammates maybe in the same way as you're used to. It, it seems like a little more, just a little more like, not as I guess intimate nobody's touching each other high-fiving or whatever it is but I mean we'll make it work I think uh it's funny to get done with practice and you know it's just you and your teammates it's kind of feels like uh college again you're going and practicing at an empty field nobody's there and then you go into the clubhouse and it's just you and your teammates so 
that that is definitely different but it's kind of, it, you know it's nice it's a time that you know maybe we all haven't got as much with each other you mentioned that during the time time off you didn't you, you found a cage but didn't find a way to do any defensive work mm-hmm. how much did you miss that and how much would you do in a typical you know situation like that um the defense um you know had there been an opportunity to get on a field and get grounders. I did get grounders one time, but uh, that was once we got closer. I think for me, um, defense is something that I, I wasn't too worried about. So getting back out there, knowing I had a few, you know, over two weeks to take ground balls and get ready, I feel comfortable with that. Um, and it, it, you know, it, and not everybody, I was just lucky enough to get a cage. You know, some people couldn't even leave their houses. Um, so I, I feel like I got myself ready and it was definitely exciting to get back out there. I know all of us were pretty juiced up to get out there the first day. I think we all uh, went went so crazy being able to get on the field. I think we were all tired the last two days because we, we blew it out the first day, <laughs> took a million ground balls and a million swings. And you don't, you forget what it's like to be in cleats all day. They always say that um, pitchers are ahead of the hitters early. And I assume that'll probably be the case. Maybe even going into this season because it's such a short training camp, but because so many people did not have any access to do any defensive work, could the defense also be a little behind for everyone everywhere initially? Yeah, I can see, I can see with just how, you know, condensed spring training is and how, how much time guys kind of took off. Um, You know, you don't really know how much quality work people got to get in over this time. And that's, you know, not their fault. It's just kind of the situation. I think you could see some guys still kicking some rust off at the beginning of the year, but once we get into it, I think that um, by the end of the season, guys are going to be kind of back to normal and, you know, come playoff time, I, I would think that everybody would be in mid season form and you would see a really good brand of baseball. Yeah. It could start a little slow and definitely, from the last couple scrimmages on, you know, I could speak for our team, the pitchers are ahead of the hitters for sure. So I think that that, you know, plays to our advantage, having the, you know, pitchers be ahead, pitchers look ready. So I'm, I'm glad that our pitchers are ready and I know our defense will be ready. And then, uh, you know, when the time comes, our bats will come around. The fact you guys um, as a defense have mostly been together, uh, you know, as a defensive unit for a pretty long time with really just the exception of maybe, camp and you know maybe one of the mm-hmm. catchers or something like that is that maybe an yeah. advantage for you guys especially early on I think so getting back on the field playing with Marcus on the left side we don't even really need to talk that much you know this is now the fourth year we've been together uh, we kind of know how to space each other out and we feel comfortable playing on the left side together obviously Olsen at first base um, all of us feel comfortable with him pretty much our outfield is you know, we always have a, a good mix of guys going in and out of the outfield, but they can all play defense really well. Ramon probably, you know, stays in center for the most part, but the corner guys flip flop and platoon a little bit, but every single guy on our team can play defense and has been around each other. So I think that plays to our advantage. And then whoever we put at second base, I have full confidence that they can just jump right in and kind of hit the ground running. You mentioned not uh, being able to do something as, as simple as just like high five teammates. Uh, that kind of like interaction is, is prohibited or encouraged for you to just keep that distance. Um, mm-hmm. What sort of just normal day to day routine habits things? Or is there anything that you feel like you're having to um, to prevent consciously, like prevent yourself from doing things that you're going to have to catch yourself uh, now that it's right? Um, maybe maybe the high fiving of the teammates and things like that. I think uh, you know ever since. COVID hit, everybody's been kind of practicing their social distancing and I think everybody's uh, awareness of hygiene and things like that has gone up, whether it's washing your hands or not touching your face. So I think everybody's kind of been in that routine for a few months now. And then when you see everybody with masks on at the field and it's kind of that constant reminder that, yeah, that, that stuff is going on. And I think, um, I think we're all pretty used to it now. Um, and I think it'll be a little different when, you know, we start getting into games and guys maybe aren't playing cards or doing things like there's not as much social stuff going on. So that is, that is a little weird, but you know, we're, we're, we're finding ways to make it work and we're going to still have fun with it because that's, you know, why we're here and we're all excited to get baseball back for a number of reasons. You mentioned that you can do some things at home to sort of shave time uh, when you get to the ballpark. What are some examples of things that you found that you can do to save time? Yeah, so 
we have some i i, I still have uh, some weights here i have some uh you know stretching bands and some stuff that i do to like activate whether it's my hips or my shoulders or like so i try to wake up and get some of my stretching done here um whether it's yoga or you know doing a couple exercises just to get the body going so that when i get to the field that i don't have to spend as much time um warming up and i can kind of get straight into uh you know maybe ride the bike stretch real quick but then hop right into the cage or so i'm not spending too much time in one spot and then I have uh, some of the, like the recovery boots at home. So after practice, instead of sitting in the training room and doing that, I can come home and jump in the recovery boots and get some of my post workout stuff done here. So just, I think guys having the access to that kind of stuff is just gonna help limit the amount of time we all spend, whether it's in the same things or in the same area. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but what's a recovery boot? Uh, like the Normatex, they're like, little sleeves you put over your legs and it like it's like compression and it's supposed to like help flush your legs out so the team the team has them um but they also if you want were ever interested in buying them they can help you purchase some of those so and some guys bring them on the road some guys have them at home but for me i like to do it after practice when i get home watching tv or something and just kind of help move some blood around your legs oh, man i know you're always Sorry, um, I know you're always big on uh, setting goals. How do you set goals in a essentially a two month season? Like, uh, what, yeah. what goals kind of goals? have to goals have to change? I think uh, you know, from a team standpoint, the goals are still the same. You know, win win as much as we can. Um, press getting off to a good start. You know, that's extremely important now. I know that was our focus coming out of spring training beforehand, but even especially now, you know, you can win and lose a game in two weeks or win and, you know, lose a season in two weeks. It seems like in this short schedule, you know, you can't fall too far behind, but you can also jump out to a good lead. So I think uh, it's exciting because every game seems like it's going to be a playoff game. I think uh, from a personal standpoint, I don't really know uh, how to set too many goals. I think I'm going to make it simple and just, uh, you know, I think the number one goal for everyone should be to stay healthy, uh, whether that's physically or from the virus. I think that if we can stay healthy from in season end to end, that in itself is a win. Um, it's not something to take lightly and it's not something that, you know, I want to spread to teammates or friends or family, or whatever it is, or get myself. So I think my main goal is to stay healthy, stay healthy, stay on the field, and then just take good at bats um, and do my part. You know, I'm not going to put too much stress on a season because I know that two months is such a small sample size. You know, if you, if you don't start well, your numbers are going to never be what you want them to. So I'm not going to hopefully dig into that too much. I know it's easy to say now, but I want to uh, just focus on the team and, you know, keeping guys healthy, hopefully uh, help uh, guys stay healthy, help guys, you know, continue to get better and just win. I think for us, it should just be our only focus should be staying healthy and making the playoffs. And way and way vision. Hey, Matt, I wanted to circle back about something you mentioned earlier. Um, you mentioned a sense of disappointment with the A's starting training camp later than other teams. And I just wanted to clarify, do you feel that this delay was something that the A's as an organization could have prevented? Or do you see it more as an MLB testing issue? Um, I know that, um, you know, it's an honest mistake. Um, but I, I think that, you know, had we been a little more proactive and got guys into town a little earlier, like some other organizations did and, you know, got testing done a couple of days before the first, there would have never been a testing delay because we wouldn't have even cut it that close. So I think that, um, you know, it's not anybody's fault per se, but I think that, uh, you know, when you wait till the last minute to do things, uh, eventually things are going to catch up to you. So I think that uh, we would have liked to see them be a little more proactive and get us out there early. Um, and just be a little more well prepared for when things were, uh, you know, given the green light to go. I think some of that was the rent dispute. I think they couldn't get into the building. Yeah, so I, I know, you know, they were doing everything they can. I'm not trying to, you know, point the finger at anybody. It's a weird situation and there's a lot more things that go into starting a season this year than just, uh, you know, getting guys to show up. So I understand that, but, you know, from a team standpoint, we want to be given every single opportunity that all of the other teams are given, especially when we know that every day matters and, you know, we're fighting with those teams. We're, uh, you know, we're not just some other team. We consider ourselves one of the best teams in the big leagues and 
we want to have all the same opportunities and chances. Were you given a reason for why you were one of the later teams to to report? No, but we just that's just kind of how they scheduled it. You know, we uh, you know, I just work here. Did you did you ask, or were you sort of pushing for an earlier start date? Um, I would have, but I, I I think those things are out of my control. Matt, who were you working out with when you were working out in Arizona? Any any of your teammates? Yeah, I was working out with Ramon. Um, I saw, I know uh, Kiana and Manaya and Gossett and some of those guys uh, were still in town. Um, everybody was just kind of finding places to work out and stuff. You know, the complex wasn't open, unfortunately, but um, me and Ramon found a cage and a little gym to work out at. So we'd get in there early before everybody else and keep our distance, but we were able to get our work in and, um, you know, it's good to practice with somebody that you know and that has seen you before because we could kind of help each other out how's he how's he looking he's looking really good um we were both hitting with you remember jp sportman played with a so he he works out there and has a, a cage in arizona um so he was uh flipping and hitting with us we we're hitting with eric martins as well out there so we we got our work in and ramon looks really good he looks like he's ready he was hitting we took live at bats once and he looked like he was already like in season four. I don't know how he does it, but he's good. How's Chris Davis looking in the, in your workout so far? He's great. Uh, in our first scrimmage, he hit three balls hard, hit a double off the left, you know, that one off the left center field wall. Um, he looks healthy. He looks like he's in shape and he seems like he's excited to be here. I think everybody is excited to excited to be back. And I think, uh, you know, with everything that's going on, uh, you kind of forget about baseball sometimes because obviously there's a lot more important things and a lot bigger issues going on in the world than, you know, just us restarting a season. But the fact that all of us did get to come back and, you know, I think we all realized how much we miss baseball and being with each other. And it brings uh, an excitement that I think we can kind of, you know, keep for this entire stretch because it's such a short time. Have you gotten your mind quite around uh, the fact that you'll be playing in front of no fans? And how is that going to change the the Coliseum home field advantage? Um, I think it's going to play to our advantage. Um, a lot of our games are pretty quiet in general. Um, so I think we're used to not having too many fans at the games. Um, so I think other teams coming in and seeing no fans and it's a big, huge, empty stadium, and it might be a little cold at night. I think it just plays to our advantage. Uh, we're used to playing there. We're used to, um, you know, playing in front of how, however big or small a crowd is. So I, I don't think we dig into it too much, and I think it's going to play to our advantage because a lot of other teams have really good home field advantage, you know, especially Houston in that, in that uh, indoor stadium was real loud. So I think for, for us to have no fans on the road and at home just plays to our advantage. Hey, Matt, it seems like there's been some pretty lively uh, BP session, sessions um, in the early goings. Have you had any any particular pitcher you've had a pretty good uh, battle with over these first couple of days? Uh, nothing in particular. I've only uh, probably had like uh, four or five at-bats. Uh, still kind of getting my bearings a little bit. But I know that our pitchers look really good. All of everybody I've faced, uh, faced Puck, Montas, Liam, uh, just to name a few, uh, everybody looks sharp. They look really well. They're throwing hard. They're throwing strikes. So uh, that's exciting in itself. I know that, um, you know, the at-bats will get probably more and more serious as we get along. But right now, guys are trying to get, you know, their eyes adjusted again and their timing. And, um, you know, we always start a little slow. So I haven't dug into the at-bats too much. But it's really good to see how far our pitchers are along already. Matt, you've touched on this a little bit already, but how well do you feel like you guys are set up for a 60-game season? Really well. We have, um, you know, a lot of young guys um, on the team, you know, top to bottom, but especially uh, on the field. So I know that's going to play a big part, um, whether it's, you know, being healthy in general or staying away from the virus to just get all the guys on the field at all times. Uh, we seem to have a very good, uh, chance at keeping all of our guys healthy and on the field at the same time. So that, that in itself is a win. But for us, we felt really good coming in this year. Our young pitching is getting more mature. Uh, we have some veteran bullpen guys and, you know, fires and guys that have 
been around and know how to compete. So that good mesh of our pitching core is ready. And I think that um, they're going to all be fresh and be able to, you know, help us out through this stretch and, you know, defensively in our lineup, I think we're there. Matt, what are the challenges uh, 15 days until opening day to get to game speed and using those days properly, uh, trying to get ready, not trying to rush? What, what are you mm -hmm. learning about the balance of what you have in these next two weeks in a day? Yeah, still, still definitely trying to find that balance. Um, I know we went hard these last three days. Um, and today we're having a little bit of a lighter workout. We don't have a scrimmage, but we have everything else, you know, batting practice, grounders and drills and hitting off the machine. I think it's, uh, for me, uh, the biggest thing for me would be focusing on getting quality reps and not worrying about the qu qu uh, quantity so much and trying to, you know, play catch up, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's, <clears throat> You know, two weeks of at-bats you get, uh, not trying to take too many swings to play catch-up and be like, oh, I need a million swings to get ready. It's, you know, take the quality swings. Don't tie yourself out because when it does start, it's going to be a sprint and you're going to get your reps. And so focusing on the quality of it and not feeling like, you know, jamming a bunch of work in is what you need. It's getting quality work and just consistent reps every day. And I think right after that two-week mark, all of us should be right in the good, a good spot.